this video, we will show you how to install the curved balusters from UnionMetalworks.com on three sides of this octagonal gazebo. We are measuring from the, the top side of the bottom 2x4 to the bottom side of the top 2x4, which in other words is the space between them has to be 29 inches. The, the space between the deck and the bottom of the board is totally up to the user. I usually like to put two to three inches space down there to give you a total rail height of 39 inches. The first step in laying out your balusters is to mark a line on the upper rail at two inches up from the bottom of the upper two by four, like so. And then we run it all the way across using a trick builder's trick little finger holding that on there like that and then keep your pencil at the two inch mark and now we want to lay out a uniform spacing on either side of our posts if the spacing is not uniform it can be very visually displeasing in this case we're going to use an arbitrary two inches this is for every post that you have Two inches here. You guys turn it too. Two inches here. We put a temporary screw in here just to hook the tape on to make it easy for us to measure the space in between our starter tip marks. And you can you, you can put a screw or you can have your associate hold it for you. Either way, it measures 72 and a half inches. And we're gonna take that over to our calculator and figure the space. So now we take that measurement that we just demonstrated, 72.5 inches, and we divide it by 4 inches, which is a nominal number. <clears throat> if we look at this little diagram, hopefully this comes out, 4 inch space in between the balusters is what you do not want to exceed. Uh, since these are 5 eighths of an inch thick, you can go all the way out to 4 and 5 eighths on center, OC, which is 4.625. So we do not want to exceed that number in our calculation. So 72.5 divided by 4 equals, we use our little calculator here, and you can also use the calculator app on your cell phone just as easily. And the answer is 18.1 balusters. And we can't have a partial baluster, so what we're going to do is round it down to 18 balusters. These are the same number, 72.5 inches. Divide that by 18 balusters. Uh, we'll multiply that number by 4 to get our original number back, since we, since we divided it by 4. Okay, 72.5 divided by 18 equals 4.03 inches. And that is the on-center distance, which is a good measure less than that. In fact, you could even round it down to 17. We're going to use 18, but just to show you what the result there would be, 72.5 divided by 17 equals 4.26, which is almost 4 and a quarter exactly. Now we're going to take this 4.03 and we're going to transfer it onto our uh, upper rail only. Now that we've calculated our spacing, we're going to transfer that spacing to our upper rail, starting with our starter mark, which we've set at two inches from the post. We used to have a screw there, now it's gone. We set our zero on the tape and we mark just over four inches. That's 4.03 by my estimate. And we're going to do that again. And we're going to just keep moving the tape down like wow. that. Another way to do this that we as builders like to do is to use a set of calipers. You simply set the caliper to the dimension that we previously calculated. Lock it in. Stick it on the mark. And then just scratch, scratch, scratch. It's much faster. And I think it's a little more accurate as well. And these are fairly cheap. You can buy them at any local store for under 20 bucks. Now we will lay them out and preload the screws in for ease of installation. Take them out, slide the sock down a little bit. Don't take the sock off. 
I'm going to show you why later. You just lay it down like that. In the case of the straight ones, lay them like that in the same way. And now we load screws into the ends of these, like so. I've got three balusters in my hand. Sometimes you can fit four, depends on how big your hands are. But what we're going to do is line that screw up on that mark and put it in halfway. Same thing with the second one. Same thing with the third one. Then we go back and get some more. Now that we have the tops all screwed in halfway, loose hanging like wind chimes, we pull off the sleeves. And what we recommend is to do it this way. One at a time, gather them together all the way down to one fell swoop, as it were. Lock them off and tie it in a nice, nice knot just like that and uh, throw it back in the box we're going to use one straight one here although we are installing a curved baluster but just to show the difference they're exactly the same up to now but the straight baluster will plumb itself if there's no wind and in that case, on a, a windless afternoon, it hangs vertical. All you got to do, oop, it just blew a little bit right about there. There you go. All you got to do is that. You don't even need a level. But the curved ones, they do tend to hang back. Okay. <clears throat> so they're hanging free. Now we're going to screw in the bottoms. And you should see very quickly why we only have to mark the tops at this point, which makes it easy. We take our torpedo level, stick it on there. Now we have two hands free. We take a screw, and with one hand, we get the screw in the bottom hole there, and we slide her out until the level says looks good. And drive her in. And at this point, you can tighten the top one as well if you want to, or you can go around after and tighten them all at the end. There. So that baluster is completely installed. Now that we have all the balusters screwed on, <clears throat> it's time for the artistic decision, which is do you want cover boards or not? And it's a 50-50 thing. I find that half the people don't care for them and half do. You can get pressure treated one by fours from Lowe's. We actually like to router an edge partially to add a horizontal line effect, but also to break the sliver potential from this. So here we go. We'll screw this on. The total thickness is two and a quarter inches so we're using two inch screws for this the screw should go in a little over halfway up because the screw for the balusters is down here and so this will tilt it in and close the gap just like this. oh let me try to get it flush here too See the gap close there? And one on the end. That's all we need. It's not a structural element. And now we'll do the top. And for the 
tops, we're going to put a cap on cap board, so we got to get it flush. It looks pretty good. Same thing here, halfway up, but down a bit. That pulled in. One in the middle. Get that flushed up there. Looks pretty good. You want on the end. Now you can see here's the completed cover board installation. Very nice. Now that we've covered the Archer and the Ponderosa, we'd like to talk about the third product, which is the Gothic Baluster. There are four things about this Gothic Baluster that need mention. One is that they are aluminum, which is the material of choice in extreme environmental conditions. Two, they are a decorative shape. Three, they are lighter weight, and so they're cheaper to ship, which is a savings for you, the customer. And number four, they require stainless steel screws, which we offer as a result of uh, the phenomenon of dissimilar metals when two dissimilar metals contact in a moist environment, corrosion can be enhanced and so stainless steel being an inert product um, avoids this and you can see those on our website as well. They're colored to match the three different colors, black, bronze and white. And now we will install the bronze one which is my personal favorite. It has red metal flake in it and it sparkles in the sun. Exactly like the archers, we like to nest this crease in to the bottom edge of the 2x4. With a 29 inch space, that gives you a 40 inch high rail. Alternatively, it can be mounted on the back side, on the outside of the rail, which a lot of our customers do, because that gives you a lot more flexibility in the rail height. In fact, it's about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half difference on both two by fours. But we are going to mount so them this way. So we removed the sleeves, unlike before, just for and this demo. And screw in the bottoms and fill in all the holes with screws. Cheers.